welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. And this is Africa Cup of Nations semi final review as we had the host beating DR Congo. And this is turning out to be a brilliant story with MRS5 as Ivory Coast are now in the final. Uh, we're also going to talk about Nigeria beating South Africa by how impressed I was with South Africa in that game. And we're going to discuss the grand final. That's going to take place this Sunday. So if you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me opinions in the opinions uh, in the comments. And let's get into it. So starting off, we had Nigeria take on South Africa. And this is the type of game that I knew would be stingy. It will be very, very tight. Both teams don't concede that many goals. They like to generally keep it low scoring. And throughout the game, it felt like that. I thought though, Bafana Bafanas, they started well. I thought Percy Tao... He's done this so many times, he gets in good position, then he's finishing just absolutely atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. But I thought in the first half, South Africa looked a better team. Uh, they created some decent openings. Uh, Nigeria weren't able to really get in the game. Osinem looked like a cutout figure. And I thought South Africa, the way they progressed the ball, it was well structured, they were well organised. And if, I felt like they were playing really, really well. And But they had to take their chances. In the first half, they didn't take... They didn't take their chances. Percy Tao, I think, should have scored. And then in the second half, I thought Nigeria came out really, really strong. Uh, I think uh, Petero, the coach, must have said that we need to play better than this. And you could see they were fighting and they were putting much more effort into it. I thought Lukman got much more in the game. I thought Simons, he got subbed. Chukwesi came on. He looked much better. You got Ola Aina, who looked so good for a fullback. Super impressed with him at this Africa Cup of Nations. And Nigeria do get a penalty. It's good ball play from Austin M. Austin M gets clipped in the box. Penalty, correct decision. It's just a really, really bad challenge from the South African player. And I thought based on that 20, 25 minutes, South Nigeria probably did deserve that penalty. And it is Truce Kong versus Williams. The guy who saved four penalties last time around, but not to be this time. As Truce Kong puts it away. I mean, it went on under Williams, I think, anyway. But he just about does the job and won nil. After that, I thought South Africa, they looked a bit lost. I don't think they had much idea what to do. There was a good chance from, uh, I think, who was it? I can't remember. Let me get the name of Yeah, Mokopa. I thought he had a great chance where he gets the ball and he just snatches at it uh, inside the box. He gave great carry and he just goes past the post. But otherwise, I thought South Africa looked a bit lost. I don't think they had really an idea what they were trying to do. I thought they kind of did give up i thought nigeria that defense looked solid and then minute 85 victor osinem gets his goal uh is a counter-attack great counter-attack it's great speed and it crosses into the box osinem finishes it off and i thought at this point the game is a wrap the game is a wrap but no the drama this was insane the drama was pure insane in this uh the referee checks the var screen for penalty on the opposition inside uh and is given, so Osinem's goals disallowed, and also South Africa get a penalty, which Mukwena puts it away like a champ, and it was a really, really good penalty for Mukwena, and he missed one in the shootout, unfortunately, but brilliant penalty from Mukwena in that moment to get South Africa to extra time, and I think on the balance of play, South Africa did deserve it, I think in the first half they were very, very good, they, had, they struggled a bit in the second half, then they gained control again, and they couldn't really want it. They couldn't want it. It was a late free kick. McQuenna again shoots. Nurabali, the goalkeeper, parries it into play. And I think it's one. I think it's the right back. And he misses the goal. It's literally the goal's open. He misses it. I think South Africa could have won it then. Uh, extra time. I thought extra time went like extra time. I don't think neither team took that many risks. I think South Africa were happy to keep the ball. Uh, while the Super Eagles were happy to stay in their shape. Try and look for opportunities. Austin M had two or three good chances. I think he could have done better with it. There was one uh, in the second half. A ball is crossed in. He leaps. He has a massive leap over the defender. I expect Austin M to put that away personally. There was one in extra time that he could have done better with. He gets the ball. Has a shot. Uh, Williams makes a good save. But late on then. Uh, Petero takes off Austin M. And I think this was due to the effects of the penalty shootout. Austin M is not great at penalties. And in comes Murphy, Murphy uh, who had only played, I think, 5 or 10 minutes of this tournament action so far. And it's a great sprint for Murphy. Gets the ball, runs at him, 
and Calcutta snatches at him. He's a one-on-one -on -one situation. He has no choice to clip the man, and it's red card for him. And of course, uh, Nigeria get a free kick in a dangerous position. Not a great free kick, but after that, nothing much really happens. Uh, both teams really accept the penalty shootout, and in the penalty shootout, it was the Nigerian goalkeeper who came out on top. Nuabali made the first save uh, from Mukwena, and it wasn't the best of penalties, I won't lie for Mukwena, but Nuabali did well. Mofi pulled it away. Uh, then the second one, both score, and then Ola Aina missed his penalty, the third one, and then Mokopa, he had a horror. That was probably the worst penalty of the whole shootout. He was slow, there was no real idea what he wanted to do, to do with that penalty. Uh, then Trisha Kong puts it away, the South African penalty goes in, and Ian Acho wins it for South, uh, Nigeria, and I think Nigeria were very well prepared for the penalty shootout. Uh, Mofi, sub, came on, extra time. Ian Acho, came on, extra time, sub. Uh, Mororo, the defender, sub, extra time. He knew what guys were good at taking penalties, and he brought them on, and Nigeria, I think, look, at times they didn't look convincing, but I thought the base they got, the defensive base, is fantastic. They're very, very difficult to beat now. But in attack, I still think they lack uh, sometimes. I still think they're not that well coached. I think Ossinam should have had more goals. Ossinam had so many chances again. And it's not been the greatest of Afcons. I can't lie for Victor Ossinam. I think he should have scored more goals. That's for sure at this Africa Cup of Nations, personally for me. But uh, I think his hold up play, his. The way he just presses the opposition, I think that's a big trait for his team as well. But Nigeria are going to be playing Sunday's final, while South Africa, who did superbly at this Af Africa Cup Nation, they knocked out Morocco at this Africa Cup Nation, they got a draw with Tunisia, will be playing DR Congo in the third place match. And talk about the second game, the host were taking on DR Congo, and DR Congo just weren't good enough, let's be honest. I think, look, I saw the same thing that happened with Guinea, happened with DR Congo in this game. They just looked flat out. They they didn't press with the same intensity, they didn't counter with the same intensity. Everything was that tad bit slower. And I thought they couldn't deal with the physical aspect because I think the Ivory Coast team also did have a good, good physical side, physical team. And DR Congo, I thought they had a bright start, they forced some issues. Uh, they also had a goal which was rightly ruled outside. But as the match started to go on, I think... After the 30 minute game, minute, Ivory Coast were in full control. Ivory Coast played well, they were controlling the ball, they were moving about, they were the most quick one twos, and I think this was probably their best performance in the Emirates fight as interim manager. And has he got one more dream performance in him to make sure that Coup de Trois are African champions? But we'll talk about that in the preview. But if I talk about this game, um Halle could have had a hat trick. Kessie, great bit of link up play on the right. I thought Singo and Gradel. Uh, Gradel on the right actually looked much, much better than he has on the left, to be honest. But Gradel, lovely one too. Lays it off for Kessie. Kessie has a shot. Uh, it hits the bar. Uh, there was a cross. And there was Singo again. Great cross into the box. Halle gets his header all wrong. I think uh, he should have been scoring that. He was free in the box. Uh, Adringa as well has a chance. Just passes the post. But second half. More and more pressure starts put on that DRC goal. I think DRC start to sit in. They were looking for a nil-nil, take this to penalties, I feel. Because the the same attacking venom that I saw against Egypt or even against Guinea was just not there. They looked tired. They really, really did look tired in this game, I thought DRC. And at times they just didn't they just didn't have any ideas. Uh and anyway, the first goal comes and it's Halle. And it's probably one of the I think it's probably took the hardest chance out of the lot he got. Uh it was a very scruffy strike. He puts it in. And just like that, Ivory Coast had the lead. The whole place is bouncing. After that, uh, Despr uh, the uh, DRC coach brings on uh, Banza. He brings on, I think, another striker. And they just they don't provide any sort of service. DRC did not look like scoring to me. So you have to give uh, Yaya Fafana, the goalkeeper. I thought he had a very good game. Singo, Bolly, Indica, and Kroner. Uh, and Kone a lot of credit because DRC did not create that much. I thought Bogonda had a very good moment when he came on uh, in the second half. He got the ball, run past a couple of the Iranian players and he had the shot, which is the side name. But otherwise, I don't think DRC did enough to really win this game. And Ivorians created a lot of challenges. Uh, Halle 
was almost one on one with the keeper. He tries to chip the keeper, misses it. Uh, I thought there were some other chances. The energy that Ari Coast played with, despite having two games going into extra time, was very, very good. And I thought they looked super fit. They looked well coached. Impressive, I think, from MS5. The, I think John Mikaseri in that number six role was a game changer. I know he had a bad game against Mali, he got Kusunu sent off, but in general, otherwise, he's been spot on. The link between the defense, the attack, and the defense seems much more confident. There's a more compact space. And I thought Kessie, Kessie was absolutely outstanding. From Kessie, man of the match. He was covering ground left, right, and center. He had that quality on the ball. He was getting players in behind. I thought he was very, very good today from Kessie. Second for Fafana, not his best game. Uh, you can have an off day, can't you? But second for Fafana, not the best. The attack, I thought Halle, look, Halle, I know he missed a lot of chances, but the difference that you see from Crasso, Kayume, and Halle is, is significant. It's significant. The basics he was doing, the hold up play, the getting other people's into play. A Dringer, compared to Gradil on the left. The difference is stark, and that's what Ivory Coast have been missing at this AFCON, and they had that in tonight's game, and they were thoroughly, thoroughly deserved winners, in my opinion, in this game. Uh, and I think this is a good thing for Ivory Coast. This game actually ended in 90 minutes, so no more extra 30 minutes, which could have helped with stamina and fatigue and all that. But Emir's fight, oh my god, what, what a story it is. He is going to be a national hero of Ivory football for years to come if he can pull this off. In trim manager winning an AFCON, it will be probably the best story I've seen in a long time. And I think the Aurorians, the way the crowd is going, I think the crowd is fully behind the team. So I do expect a very good atmosphere on Sunday. And Ivory Coast, I just feel like I'm going to be very difficult to be for the Super Eagles. But it's going to be an interesting game, we shall see. But tonight, I thought Ivory Coast, MS5, tactically spot on, uh, made the changes at the right time. I thought he took off Halle, he took off a Dringo, he took off a Fana at the right times and they saw other game really really well at the end fantastic I don't think any Arborian fans can complain I think realistically the scoreline is quite flattering to DRC I think it could have been two or three really if Arborians had their finishing boots on but I don't think they will really care as they will take the 1-0 and move to the final where it is going to be playing the Super Eagles again where and it was the Super Eagles who started the whole disaster with Coup de Trois at the Safcon beating them 1-0 and now Ari Coast have a chance to finish that story off with a bang and I think it's going to be a really, really good final personally I think it's going to be two quality teams at it against each other with different styles of play I'm excited and let's see what happens DRC though if I talk about DRC great AFCON brilliant at this AFCON tonight were not great tonight they were not great thoroughly deservedly beaten I don't think uh but they can be proud of their whole AFCON. I think they knocked out Egypt. They go draw against Morocco. Uh, they knocked out Guinea. I think they had a superb AFCON. Superb AFCON. So DRC can go out with their heads held high. And I think tonight, Ivory Coast were just simply better than them. There's nothing wrong with it. I thought the hosts were fantastic and they deserved to make it through to the final. And this was your AFCON semi-final review. If you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, Please subscribe, leave me your opinions in the comments and I'll see you for another video.